Hello and welcome to this video. In this video we're going to be talking about that dreaded situation where suddenly transactions in your bank account are not matching to transactions you're swear by have already been included. If that's the case then we need to be looking at the reasons as to why they don't match because the worst solution you could do is add another transaction when you know that transaction's already there. That is unfortunately going to result to double counting and we don't want that. So join me in today's video as we look at the reasons why you're going to be pulling your hair out because you can't find a way to make sure that your transactions are matching. Join me on for this one because I think this one's a crucial part of getting to grips with QuickBooks Online. Hello, my name is Aaron Patrick. I'm a chartered accountant, a certified UK trainer, fancy new logo, that QuickBooks chap on the internet, and also head of accounts here at Boffix. Now, in today's video, we're going to be talking about the world of transactions not matching. It's really frustrating, isn't it? Think about this scenario here. You see, ultimately, what you want to be is a good person when it comes to reconciling your bank account. So as I go in front of me here, you're going to be through looking at adding your rules as they go along. You're going to be looking to maybe add in a recorder transfer. But ultimately, your best solution is when, when you see this phrase here, one match found. See, ultimately, what this one match found is if I go to my little search bar and try and find that transaction. Thankfully, it's one of my newer transactions, so easy enough to find. And then you'll notice that basically what's happened here is we've put this particular transaction against insurance, against exempt, amount 3472, right date, right bank account. And it's probably been based on an attachment or something that we've had outside of QuickBooks that prompted to put this information in. Now, when we match the transaction, what we're doing is we're saying, well, we've already got that transaction in QuickBooks. Let's match it. The transaction's been dealt with and gone from four reviewed into categorized. But what's also happened, if I go back to the transaction that we just looked at, use my little search bar, go back to where we were, this transaction's technically now been updated by having the one online online bank, uh, one online banking matches set just here. And it gives me that almost audit trail of what's going on. So matching is fundamental in the way that we deal with our bank account within QuickBooks Online. But every so often, we'll look at a transaction and we'll go, hmm, I know I put that transaction in. I know it's there, but why is it not matching to QuickBooks? And that's where it gets really frustrating. So here's some reasons as to why. First of all, let's go back to that transaction that we have just looked at. And let's go and undo the transaction because we know it's already there, so we know it should be working, but why is there going to not go through? So let's go and undo it, first of all. Go back to my full review page, and you'll notice that the match is just here nicely. Now, curiously with this one, as I scroll down, it's also matched against the next month and the month after. And this can be a reason why sometimes your matches don't quite work out. You see, you've got to be really careful this match here, 1st of the 6th, 2020, obviously relates to the 1st of the 6th, 2020 expense. This match here, 1st of the 7th, 2020, doesn't relate to the 1st of the 6th, 2020. It's only going to give me a reconciliation headache if I pick that one. And if I go further down, 1st of the 8th, 2020, 1st of the 6th, 2020, even less likely it's going to be that one. But then if I go down even further, 1st of the 9th, 2020, well, it's not fine a match. So there's two things to note from this one. First of all, we've got to be careful when we're matching. We've got to make sure we're matching the right one if there's multiple options. But also that there's a date range to consider when things match. So point number one to prove. If I was to match accidentally against the 1st of the 7th, 2020, match that one now. Notice how now it's not coming up with the match. I could be convinced that I've put that transaction in against the first six 2022. I could go, I could search, I could find the transaction and I could bring the transaction back up and say, look, that transaction's there. Why are you not matched? Well, we've got to be careful about what the online match has already done. If I go up here, you can see that at the moment, the first of seven, 2022, 34th, 20, it's there. Does give me the option to unmatch though. So I could unmatch it here and then go back to my bank account. 
maybe do a little refresh so I can make sure. Uh, but now it does give me that option to go in and match it from there. So that is an option for me. But you have to be aware that the transaction may be there, but it may be matched against the wrong item in the bank. The other one is that date range issue. So if I go back to my search bar and I go in and I find that transaction again, what happened if I put it against a month before? So if I put it to the 1st of the 5th, 2022, you'll notice that if I save it, the transaction's still ready for me to match. Now I'll be a little bit more dubious at this point, is that the right one? But now let's go and do it by a month before that. So let's go in and put it to the 1st of the 4th, 2022 and save and close. Now you can see that I can still do it, but again, I would be a bit dubious. Notice how the others though that we had here, so the, the one that was on the 1st of the 7th and the one on the 1st of the 8th, now don't have a match showing. Well, that's because of this date range. QuickBooks can only search or will only automatically search for a particular period. So if I then go back into it again, look at my transaction, and do it one more time all the way to the 1st of the 3rd, 2022. I think we can all agree when I press save and close, that transaction now doesn't appear there. So that's one of your first problems. You've got to be really careful of the date. There's basically a three month swing. And if it's not in that three month swing, you're not going to be able to have it match automatically. Now there is a way to force the match. If I click into the transaction and I press the find match button, you'll notice it's showing the date range it's looking from. The 3rd of the 3rd, 2022, to the 11th of the 6th, 2022. If I was to extend that to the 1st of the 3rd, 2022, then suddenly my transaction appears. And in fact, QuickBooks has an aha moment, and up here, it gives us some suggested matches. And it says, look, there's an expense here, click on it, let's tick the one we recommended, or we, we, re we know that it's gonna click. And now we know that it's time to press save and we're good to go. So that's a key part. We need to be making sure that our dates are correct and date ranges can be one of the big issues why you're not being able to match your transactions. Another reason why people can have issues though is going to be the following. So if I go back to the transaction we've just done, and just for completeness, I'm gonna bring that back to the 1st of the 6th, 2022, so it'll automatically appear for me. Um, and just for now, I'm gonna unmatch the transaction. And the big change I'm gonna make now, though, is the payment account. People need to be really careful when they create expenses about what that payment account's gonna be. Because if I put it to anything else, say business bank, save and close, I go back to my bank account, that's not going to pick that transaction up. I'm in my NatWest account at this point in time, and I have to find transactions in my NatWest account and expenses are the only ones that will appear in my fine match transactions. Even if I try to do what I just did then and force QuickBooks to look for it, it's not gonna be able to find it because it's only looking for transaction paid for in the NatWest account. So if I go back to that transaction, I go and change the payment account from business bank account to NatWest, save and close. Now you can see I can now match accordingly. So that's two ways where it can fall, fall foul. The date is critical on that transaction that you've made. And also it's going to be really important that you make sure that the, um, the payment account is correct. What about if it's a bill though and it's still not appearing? See, QuickBooks is really clever for us. It can automatically put a bill and mark that bill as paid if we match it from the screen. Great example is that last insurance one I've just done was an expense. What about though this time if I create it as a bill? I'm gonna do it for the 1st of the 7th, 22, and um, make sure I get the right person, make sure I get the right category, and put the amount in just there, save and close. Well now currently I do have a bill outstanding and you can see at the moment it's an open balance of 34.72. But QuickBooks is clever enough to say, look, yes, we've got an expense there versus six, doesn't quite tie in with this one. 
And you've got to be careful when you have these options and multiple matches that you choose the right one. QuickBooks will more likely give you that first option because chronologically it makes the most sense. But a bill is an item that's not been yet paid. So currently, if I go and search again and bring that bill up, it says that I've got 34.72 and I need to make payment. I need to make due that payment. The cleverness can be though that QuickBooks will automatically put it against it if it finds it, press the match button, I've matched the transaction, go back to the search, bring that bill up, notice how now the payment status has reverted to paid because the matching process has marked this bill as paid. So QuickBooks is really clever at marking transactions as paid, but sometimes we need to give it a bit of help. For example, this transaction here, I can use that find match transaction. I click find match, and then you'll notice it's bringing up the transactions here. Now this here, 328.23, could be a part of the bill that's outstanding here for 12,000 pound, or it could be a match between the two. Let's see some examples of how that'll work. So back to the same scenario, if I click into it and press find match, I've made a few adjustments to those BT transactions. And actually, the second that I press find match, QuickBooks has seen a suggested match. It's seen that 32823 relates to these two transactions. So if the transactions are absolutely spot on, and you've got £100 here, 22838 here, then QuickBooks is clever enough to find that and give you a suggested match. And in this case, it's so confident, it's already ticked it for me, and I can press save, both of those bills will be matched accordingly. But what about if it's not quite as simple as that? What about if I go in and press find match? You notice that there's no suggested matches because there's a penny difference. I could tick this one and then I could tick this one. And at that point, it's going to leave me a penny shy. Well, in this case, then, because that penny difference there, throwing it out, then I'm going to have to do a resolve difference and I'm gonna to have to put this against it because realistically, I want that penny paid off against there, but also I wanna write off probably the final bit of it, because there's probably not much chance that that extra one P is there. So sometimes you find match won't work because there's a penny or there's a, pe there's a difference there. The resolve Difference one is also really crucial if you've got some third party fee. So maybe you're in a position where this fee here to make this fee has cost you five pound. Well, at this point, that's where resolve difference, you'd have to put the negative five pound in to put it free from there. Keep an eye on some of the videos we've done before about grossing up income to make that make sense a lot more. <clears throat> Another reason it might not be matching is if you've got foreign currency involved. So you look at this transaction. At this point, I've got £24.68 be paying to some supplies depot. If I go into my expenses and suppliers, what's actually happened is I've paid this USD supplier. Let's click into it. Well, we had a $30 transaction back in April 2022. Then the payment on the 25th of the 5th, 2022 was for $30. The equivalent of that GBP was £23.82. And that's because QuickBooks has been really clever here. It's using the technology available. It's being able to bring what's called the spot rate, bring it in. It's been able to calculate things for you. It's doing a profit and loss on exchange rate. Actually, this is really, really, really powerful. Problem is that the calculation it's made didn't quite come through to what we did. In fact, it expected £23.98 to be paid. We ended up paying £24.60 odd. So by the sounds of it, we got a worse deal than what was predicted. If I click into Supplies Depot and press Find Match, my key part here, because we're in foreign currency, is to change from home currency, move to foreign currency. At that point now, it's all appeared here for me, but the cleverness is this next bit. I tick the little box, and what happens is it's now going to convert from the exchange rate that it's found through using the spot rate and the connected services and to the actual exchange rate that we achieved. The one that we were able to do by transferring the money from one place to another. From that, I press save and that will allow me to match accordingly. So there we are. There's some great examples of why you may not be able to match your transactions. First of all, make sure that date is right. 
critical to make sure you have the opportunity to force QuickBooks to look either side of that date range, but ultimately you probably wanna be within that date range for it to make logical sense. Secondly, make sure that you're posting against the right account. If you're not posting against the right account, so in this case, Visa credit card, current account, for example, if I don't post against it, that transaction will never be found. So your payment account is really, really critical for those matching processes. Also, don't forget to use that find match option to really force things to, to, into play. Maybe you have multiple transactions that need to be found. Maybe you wanna be paying a payment against a particular larger invoice. That can be utilized with the find match option. Anything that's not just obvious as to that matches against X and Y, use that find match option to really find what the transaction you're looking for. And finally, don't let foreign currency be the thing that really throws you out. QuickBooks does a lot of hard work with foreign currency for you. So what you really wanna be doing is making sure that you're utilizing QuickBooks for its cleverness. And in this case, the cleverness is sometimes too clever and you have to use that fine match foreign currency and then it will go through and be able to find the transaction that you need. So hopefully those tips will help you. I've got some more tips on fine match. If you want the next round of tips, use the option in the option below to put some comments in and tell me that you're looking for more options to why you can't find some matches. And hopefully you can see how important finding match is to you and your business. One thing we don't want is duplicated items that can cause a lot of confusion, can cause the wrong taxes being paid and ultimately can make it so that your data is not very very clear now with that being said please make sure that you like subscribe thank you to everyone who's been supporting the channel lately we've seen a huge growth and it's all thanks to you so massive thanks there my name has been aaron patrick this video as always has been an absolute place to do don't forget to like subscribe all that sort of stuff and i will see you in the next video bye for now